Hello friends, welcome to Channel Raisa Blade. I'm your friendly neighborhood Raisa. And yes, today's video is January 20, 22nd, 2022's, yes, 2022's Art Nouveau Manny By Me box. But before I get started on that, I want to get you thinking. Have you uh, wondered why we often associate green with poison in cartoons and movies and how the shade Poison Green got its name? Uh, how did celebrated Art Nouveau idealist artist William Morris taint his legacy quite literally? That is something to think about for the second half of the video. Um, but do think green for the, for the theme, kind of. <laughs> You're going to hear Gozer playing with his toy because he's been following me all morning and I needed him to be distracted for a while. Mm, some of you who know me know Gozer. He's my cat. He's fun. He's neat. Um, I am Reza. On my channel, I make nail art product review videos. I teach technical tutorials, tips and tricks, and more. Um, I like to think I add a certain perspective. Um, if you're new, keep watching. Uh, you'll get the gist. Um, today I'm sharing some fun extra things about this month's uh, Art Nouveau Manny by Me box. If you're an old friend, a subscriber perhaps, uh, you know this is my favorite post-Renaissance art movement. So uh, of course I'll show you my swatches, my inspiration, nail, nail art, all those things I always share with you. Except the little cold nail stickers because my vague disinterest in nail stickers demands that even when I mean to show them to you, I lose them or I allow Gozer to escape with them. You decide what their fate was. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope to add a teeny bit of context. So maybe after watching this, you'll want to do a web search or two to see what you think of Art Nouveau. It's not just paintings or posters. It's kind of incorporated into everything that happened for a couple of decades. Uh, let's, uh, talk, well, 1890-ish to 1910-ish, maybe. Um, it's not specific and precise, but that's, I think, where we put it. Um, it was everywhere, the same way later Art Deco would be everywhere from architecture. Think, like, the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building for Art Deco, all the way to upholstery, um, and light fixtures, sconces, etc. Same thing with Art Nouveau. Uh, for simplicity's sake, gosh, I love these plates. I love that they did this. No, for for a little wider uh, nail stamping context, there is, there are a few Art Nouveau um, plates out there. Nicole Diary did one. Um, that's the company that's born pretty. Um, and uh, but Nicole Diary is a different line of plates. Uh, there's also a Moyu London um, artist. Uh, collection and they did a couple of Art Nouveau plates. Uh, I have at least one of those. Anyway, so I'm thinking of plate MXM071 as Mucha. He was Czech and Alphonse Mucha uh, is responsible for all those awesome posters that you see from, for example, this is taken from a poster for Job uh, cigarette wrapping papers. So all of this image you see here is actually cigarette smoke. Um, and then, uh, Mooka also did the Zodiac, which is where this image comes from. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of off the top of my head context when I go through these images. Um, but, and then the wallpaper and prints, that would be William Morris. William Morris, who started the arts and crafts movement in, uh, England. And, uh, there were a couple of things that I copied precisely as far as the coloring goes. So this section here I copied and I'll show you what I did with that. Um, the lemons I copied, those are really easy to copy. Um, and then some of these uh, other things like the flourishes he did in a few different colors. Um, also, of course, keep green in your head. Um, it, well, I'll go ahead and tell you now, um, sort of uh, presage what I'm about to say later, uh, but um, there was a very important green developed in mm, very last part of the 18th century by a maybe Swiss scientist, uh, Schiele. And so this particular green was called Schiele's green. It's still called Schiele's green, although we think of it as poison green sometimes. Um, 
Some people say emerald, but it's not truly emerald green. Anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later because it was made with arsenic. Okay, I spoiled it. I'm sorry. I couldn't not say it. Um, so anyway, um, and then uh, this one is essentially this plate, the 72, is Art Nouveau as experienced in Victorian England. So... Uh, William Morris was, for practical purposes, uh, he, I mean, he had an empire with his popular wallpaper designs um, and various prints. Um, and he had some people he worked with who did uh, textiles and things, too. Um, and then with Mocha, we branch out to posters, advertisements. Um, this is Eastern Europe. Um, and uh, from we, him, we see art with beautiful women, flowing organic line work. Um, I forget what the name of these lines was, but you'll all often see a little bit of asymmetry. The image will still be balanced, but it will like visually balanced as far as composition goes, but there will be asymmetry. Here's a, here's a kind of a good example. These lines are very indicative of Art Nouveau with this frame here. Anyway, so um, what Muka does that is just amazing and personal is he takes folk elements from his um, enculturation from his country. And as he proceeds and gets more developed in his work, we see him add more and more of these elements into his art. And it's wonderful to see. So I actually, I'll go ahead and show you now. I printed out a couple of images. Uh, now, as far as exact coloring, um, uh, he would do multiple uh multiples of, of a lot of posters. So you'll see a lot of extant, which I mean, just means it's still around from way back when we still have it. So you'll see a lot of extant um, posters from that period with various um, different differences in color. And some will have faded, of course, but this is very similar to, well, Tiffany Green, this particular one. Um, and actually, uh, the Tiffany uh, artists were working contemporaneously in the United States. Uh, to Muka over uh, who was in, in Eastern Europe. And you see some of this unique line work here in one of Muka's posters. There are uh, modern um, contemporary artists who will take this style and they'll work uh, various women uh, pop culture figures. Like I'm sure you might have seen one of Snow White and um, I've seen one of Princess Leia from Star Wars where they'll work her into one of... Uh, one of these style uh, works. I have a, a good friend, Joe, who used to do the most beautiful Art Nouveau sleeves uh, tattoos. So anyway, um, what else do I have to say? I, because I kept talking. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they're just transcendent. So uh, like I said, we're going to go with 1890 to 1910. So we do have an overlap with Victorian England, and that is... Um, important when when it comes to William Morris and the story of Shields Green. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to you about how I did some of these manis. Um, I will have pictures. I did burn myself again, guys, friends, whatever. Yes, I did. Um, I wanted to get the coloring right on uh, this particular mani. So I did um, one thing that you can do as you're making a decal or reverse stamping. I don't take mine off the stamper generally. Um, with reverse stamping is that after you've put a few coats of a top coat on, well, not top coat, uh, wet and wild clear. Um, but I also use this uh, when I want to turn over the image, a couple of coats of this because it's harder. Um, it gives the decal a little bit more body. So if I'm gonna turn something over, I'll go ahead and treat this one the normal way with wet and wild clear before I put on my color and after. But this one, I'll put on a couple of uh, coats of that LA Colors top coat base coat so that I can manually flip it over on the stamper so that I get this sort of effect. So I did, I did a couple of these things by hand because the frame here is perfectly Art Nouveau, but it's very skinny, certainly for these for these uh, nails. And then this is from uh, Muka Zodiac. Um, and my, my apologies if I'm pronouncing him wrong, if you're Czech, I just, uh, in art class and everything, we always pronounced it Muka, but it could be wrong because, you know, we're American 
we're saying it. Anyway, this particular uh, Manny I did with the Morris prints, and um, I've seen a lot of uh, various colors, but I did see a blue, yellow, and green. Um, and this is, of course, with the matte top coat from Nevermind. The link will be in the description, as with any other important um, items that I use in this uh, in this video. So the green was what was really important to me. So um, I, uh, but this is from a Morris uh, print. Um, well, wallpaper, fabric, whatever. Um, they do have um, wallpaper sample books from way back when. And then um, these are the two colors. I don't have anything close to compare it to for you. Uh, those of you who are collecting Maniology stamping polishes. I mean, so am I obviously, but I mean, I don't have anything quite like this. So this one is called Baroque, um, incorrect, but okay. And then Renaissance, also incorrect, but okay. Usually they go with the theme of the, of whatever art or theme they use, but I, those weren't quite right. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but we've got how it shows up on both white and black. Um, obviously, of course, well, I mean, of course, um, this one doesn't do quite well. This purple doesn't do quite well over black, but the gold pearl gray kind of color, uh, very interesting color. I really like it. That does show up over the black as well as the white. So um, here, what I've done is I've taken one of Morris's um, Damask-like prints, and I've actually just back to back because of the longer length of this nail tip, I've actually, you can see the line where I, uh, where I did that, um, connected them up. And then I did use a glossy instead of a matte coat over that. I really like the purple and the green together. Um, the reason I did a glossy instead of a matte coat is that matte coats tend to accentuate details. In this case, the detail would include the adjoining, um, sides of the print. So I want to I want to sort of gloss over and take attention away from that, which is the job of a glossy top coat. Here, um, what I've done, this is from the Mooka plate, is with these lilies, I actually put this um, print on a smush background. You can't see a lot of it, but I do think it adds to kind of the water effect there. And then you do have that common Art Nouveau frame. Here is the woman from the Job papers, uh, cigarette papers advert that I told you about. Um, I just did this one as a very simple one. You will see that she is um, all nips out and everything. That is very accurate. Um, if I were, if I had colored this in the way that uh, Mooka did, there would be a little uh, pink um, anatomically where it would go, but I wanted to kind of, you know, uh, family friendly eyes this so that if you just if you kind of look at it glance at it whatever you're not necessarily going to notice everything not that there's any shame in a beautiful woman's body that's not my opinion here that's I'm just trying to cover my bases for everybody what everybody likes so here I have accidentally stretched an image and it worked out okay um, and this underneath here is from a creative shop plate this is an Art Nouveau pattern and since it fits, I went ahead and used that um, along with this uh, female face. This is a kind of a combination of looks because I use these kind of actually, as we as we mentioned, maybe Baroque kind of uh, damask looking um, uh, flowers with the, I don't know if you can see the flourishes here. I've painted them in gray, uh, but these are from a uh, uber chic plate, but I've, I've uh, framed them around this woman from the Mooka plate. So if you see, this is the original image that I took, and I'll show you these images as I have stamped them out so that you can look at each one. But here's the actual original image, and then here is what I have done with it. Just to sort of give it an ethereal kind of quality. That's what I was after. Um, so that is what I have done for my nail art with the official manis. Now, as you well know, um, there will be swatches. And as I talk about the swatches, I'll maybe talk about the green and juicy bit of art history that explains how the talented and very financially fortunate William Morris, founder of the arts and crafts movement in England, tainted his own legacy with arsenic. Now, these were not tall 
Um, these were not tall stamps here as on the Morris plate. These are kind of short. So I have done this one with a kind of a French effect. And then the other one, I took the half moon area and colored it in. And then this is of course reverse stamped. And this is due to the height of the stamp on the plate. So you can, you can work around all these things. Another thing I could have done is taken a line from another plate. I mean, we have lines all the time, all over sorts of plates. Um, you could take a line and sort of, you know, make a definite metallic, beautiful divide if you wanted to. You could take a decorative line, um, whatever, whatever you like. This is the look I came up with. This is uh, the original that I was kind of taking my inspiration from was uh, pastel yellow. This amazing stamping polish is from Hit the Bottle. Uh, there's a pastel line that is just great. So I have pastel yellow, pastel purple, pastel pink. And I think uh, the original was pastel yellow, green, and blue. But I, maybe with a little pink, but I wanted to make it more interesting than that. Hence, what you see before you. Um, and then this one is from the Mooka plate. This is a, uh, using the pearlized gray with some, I mean, the gray pearl with some uh, gold. That's the base coat here. And then I've used the purple called Baroque to color in the flowers. And then of course I've used that very vibrant green that we've been discussing um, at, for the leaves. So arsenic. I did mention that. Um, Part of the reason why I chose green here again for this particular um, this particular image stamp nail um, the compound that we're referring to is copper arsenic which is the the shields green that he invented um, so fields forest positively popping with green we've got sage olive forest uh, viridian lime green pine green hunter green olive green oh you know all sorts of lovely greens but there was a lack um, you know, pigments were hard. If you study old painting, um, uh, Renaissance paint, I mean, pigments were tough, uh, and a lot of it was poisonous. And so that particular green was hard to get and, uh, Shields found a way to get it. And the way to get it was copper arsenic. Now this is that Baroque, um, that purple color used, uh, to stamp with. I really do like it as a stamping polish. Anyway, so um, once they achieved that green, they went ham. So um, William Morris is making uh, wallpaper. I don't know. Let me look at my notes and see. I, I think I'm mm, sort of telling the story out, at, out of order because right about the time that a well and truly industrialized Britain developed enough of a quite comfortable middle class to be able to afford unnecessary things like tchotchkes, um, affluent clutter, let's call it, decorative furnishings, um, things that you didn't need that you could just have. And some of those things with the new middle class and people who are making a lot of money, this is what I copied um, from one of Morris's works. I tried to get the coloring just right, all those outlines in orange, uh, that is a copy. Well, I mean, not a copy, you know, I, I tried to get it right. Same with the limes try to get that one right too. Um, and there are a few different colorings that are out there of the limes. Again, these are fabrics and textile, textiles and wallpaper. They would have been available in different colors, but the green was super popular. There were even color uh, catalogs that were published in England that would sort of announce what you'd use if you had taste. And, and taste was very important to them. This is just offhand, um, but there's a really good show called Hidden Killers of Victorian England, I think. Anyway, um, that, that covers this kind of thing. Anyway, so wallpaper became a luxury that a lot of people could get. Um, and uh, well, William Morris uh, made a lot of wallpaper and he sold a lot of wallpaper and he mined a lot of arsenic in his arsenic mine that he happened to get. And then people started to die. A lot of people died. <laughs> Um, they believe that it is actually arsenic green uh, or shields green or poison green wallpaper that killed Napoleon. True. They think that. 
Um, anyway, because arsenic poisoning symptoms, uh, you know, there was a lot of disease and various things, uh, cholera, etc., cetera, um, that were just endemic to the population. So um, let me show you my images while I tell you my story so that I won't make this heart longer than it would have to be. Anyway, but people started to die, especially in London. This is the mocha plate. I love these lines here and these dragonflies. It's just beautiful. Um, especially in London, where the super industrialized uh, England, I mean, in London, there was such a fug that uh, you had to keep your window closed all the time because ugh, the outdoor air was absolutely poisonous. Well, unfortunately, so was the indoor air. Uh, if you had this kind of wallpaper. There were a couple ways you could get sick. The particles themselves could come off the wallpaper, but also if the wallpaper got damp at all, um, the mold would actually eat and disperse the, the arsenic into the air. It's really gross, isn't it? I love the Zodiac one, it's so beautiful. All of these are really beautiful. is one of my favorite artists of all time. I do love these flowers. I'm so glad of these plates. Anyway, so let's move on to the Morris ones. Um, so people started to say, hey, this is a problem. Uh, doctors, the Lancet, very, very proud and noble um, established medical journal. Um, people were dying and the doctors were speaking up and more and more doctors started speaking up and William Morris said, no, no, my paper is not poisonous, no arsenic. I mean, this paper is just fine. Everything's fine, he said, as he, writing socialist things, uh, kept mining arsenic and putting it in his uh, wallpaper because he made a lot of money. So <laughs> it was just interesting, given that he was the idealistic father of the arts and craft movement and uh, an avowed socialist. Anyway, so everybody should be free except for uh people who buy my wallpaper because there's no such thing as arsenic poisoning it's just weird because people were already aware of the various toxic elements i mean lead white it's called lead white for a reason <laughs> look at all these lovely lovely flowers and florals so these plates stamp great right out of the box all right so those things I have showed you, those things I have showed you, um, I've showed you all the other things. Um, so anyway, uh, different countries did outlaw shield screen uh, used in things like dresses that not good for dresses, killed people. Um, so uh, more and more doctors railed against this, more and more people railed against this. Somebody got sick in the Queen's newly, Queen Victoria's newly, green papered room, a uh, diplomat. Um, it was just, it wasn't a good look. That's all, uh, you know, and during this time, well, Morris is crossing his heart and hoping to die that his uh, gorgeous patterns were perfectly safe. So eventually other pigments were developed that gave quite a beautiful look. Customers self-selected out of buying arsenic wallpaper. Shields green was no longer used. Uh, for things like that, but also it was never officially outlawed in Great Britain, uh, but in other countries it was. So uh, anyway, um, Morris's great tradition lives on, and he is a wonderful artist. Do not get me wrong, but it's not cool to sell poison wallpaper. That's all I'm saying. So um, do I have anything else to say to you? I do. I hope that you will subscribe. Um, if you enjoyed this, do press the like button if you enjoyed my video. Um, I know that I talked a lot today, but I had something to say. And um, I have enough <laughs> stuff off the top of my head to actually do an Art Nouveau video. But I thought the green was really interesting. So um, do let me know um, what you want to see from me in the future. I do do these MXM reviews every month. I do a lot of different samples. I know I'm very late this month. Things happened. Everything exploded. And ta-da, here we are. So next we've got, uh, we've got some of those Creative Shop new plates coming up. And ooh, an HL 
Cosadora plate that is mythical creatures, maybe, depending on if that sounds good to you. Um, do please tell me what you thought of this video. Tell me what you thought of Morris and Mooka and how cool it is that MXM, Morris and Mooka, it's just, it's all lining up this month. That's all I'm saying. Maybe it was kismet. Maybe it's fate. Um, and maybe you will like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> So, see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay creative. Bye-bye.